Hi, and welcome to my presentation, which is called Challenges in Detecting Emergent Behavior in System Testing. What I want to talk to you about today is uh, this. First look at the problem statement, the research questions, the state of practice within the company, what is really emergent behavior, uh, the challenges we see in detecting these emergent behaviors, uh, the an anatomy detection approaches that we have uh, looked at. Then I will try to answer the research questions before concluding and looking a bit into further work. Okay, so what is really the problem? The problem is that we have undetected unwanted behavior through our system integration testing that could result in detecting these behaviors late in verification testing. The reason for this is that we test too little because it's costly to perform testing at system level and it's also time consuming because we depend much on manual analysis of test data and this uh, analysts, the domain experts, are not available to do this analysis work most of the time. So if you look at the figure to the right here we can see that when a test is decided it is scheduled, it is executed, critical errors may be found uh, we have data with unknown amount of errors stored uh, through log files that are subject to later analysis uh, and evaluation if this is okay or not. If it's okay, then we go forward. If it's not okay, we create tickets to sort of uh, redesign, re-implement to fix these issues and perform retesting and go through this again. So the research questions are these. First, what are the current challenges in detecting emergent system behavior? Second, how are cost and resource constraints affecting the detection of emergent system behavior? And last, how can the company improve detection of emergent system behavior during the system integration phase? The state of practice within the company is that we follow the V model. We define acceptance criteria and test cases through the uh, requirement and design phase, the left hand side of the V model. Um, we have a lot of automated tests and test result analysis at the unit level, but as we go up uh, in the hierarchy on the right hand side of the V model through comp component level testing, subsystem level testing, system level testing. We get uh, less and less test coverage, more and more manual operations. So we, we struggle with uh, these emergent behaviors within the, the system as we go up on the right hand side. So we could experience errors on system level that uh, we can't really trace back to subsystem level or component level or unit level. So what are these emergent behaviors that we're talking about? The main reason is that um, the whole is more than the sum of its parts. Uh, when you integrate different components into a subsystem or different subsystems into a system, you create synergies due to interactions that give rise to behavior that you have not planned for. 
you might have planned for them, you might have not, because they can be both known and unknown, they can be both desired and undesired. But it's a fact that these types of behavior are there and there. They're, they will emerge when you combine different systems. Um, we can define systems into different categories, as we see in the figure to the right here, through the category simple, complicated, and complex. And we can connect these two emergent behavior categories being simple, weak, strong, and spooky. Uh, complex systems that are really um, not easy to understand, do not usually repeat. Uh, they connect to strong emergence, which is uh, behavior that, that is not predictable. While complicated systems are easier to understand, and, and at least you can understand them by detailed uh, analysis, often connected to weak emergence, which is sort of predictable system behavior. So we, we really want to push to the left in this figure from complex system with strong emergence towards a uh, complicated system with weak emergence. The challenges we have experienced in detecting these emergence behaviors are um, based on uh, interviews that we have uh, performed within the company, interviewing different relevant stakeholders. We found that the main bottleneck is the analysis coverage. We analyze on average 10% of uh, what we test at system level. Even though we test too little, so we really should uh, focus on automating the, the analysis part to improve this test uh, regime of ours. We experience issues with the scheduling and communication because we have an isochronous process um, where the testers and the analysts are working uh, at different things, different uh, phases of the project. So they're not really in phase when the, when the testers are executing the tests and providing test results. The analysts are doing other types of work, so they're not really ready to do analysis. And there's also lack of information. The analysts are not, at least not always, alerted about available test results. And they do not get information on the, the purpose of the tests that have been performed. So there's definitely room for process improvements within the company in this area. For anomaly detection approaches that we have looked into to deal with this emergent behavior, we can look at it in three different phases. First, we have the design phase, where we define the acceptance criteria. Here we could um, increase the, the coverage because we, we lack coverage. Uh, so this is the main thing that we can do in the, the design phase, increase the, the test coverage. If we move over to the integration planning, where we define test cases and test scenarios, we could optimize to, to generate less analysis work by making sure that more test cases could use the same test scenarios. Uh, the last phase, the system integration phase, we get the, the test results and do analysis. 
here we use too much time on the analysis due to a lot of manual operations. So we should really focus on automating this to make this more efficient. For the first uh, phase we looked at, the design phase, it's uh, early in the project, so we experience low detectability because we have little knowledge. So we, we should focus more on the integration phase, where we can look at two different approaches, uh, one called macro level and one called micro level. For the micro level approach, we can look at uh, a selection of system parameters, uh, look at the, the values of these uh, accumulated values that could indicate uh, the, the quality of the system or even behavioral integrity to see if we move past um, specific threshold values or if we uh, adjust the probabilities and uh, they get too low and that's why we experience this emergent behaviors so we should really look uh, into this to, to understand what's going on specific values could indicate performance in certain conditions because uh, there's uh, a lot of dependencies uh, in effect um, and um, we should find ways to get control of all these dependencies. Why are things uh, happening in such and such situations? The pros with the, this macro level approach compared to the micro level is that it's less resource intensive. The cons is that uh, we get little information on which system part that causes the emergent behavior. For the micro level, we check each component for each new development increment. So all components are checked, but we only do analysis on the detected system parts, the system parts that are relevant for, for finding these emergent behaviors. The pros with this approach is that uh, it gives us the ability to identify the components that's causing this emergent behavior. And the cons is that it's uh, more costly than the, than the macro level approach. What we really want to get out of this is to sort of detect non-intuitive dependencies like if we introduce a change to one component we could expect that the other components within the same subsystem are affected and even the subsystem as a whole but uh, how can we know that a component in a totally different subsystem will be affected. This we need to, to figure out. So, to try to answer the research questions that I stated earlier. The first one being, what are the current challenges in detecting emergent system behavior? It is because of unpredictability. We have unstated expectations to the product and we have uh, undiscovered behavior due to interactions. We also have scheduling issues by uh, analysts not allocated to do analysis so we, we get little analysis done and also for the communication part, the information flow is not as it should be. The analysts should at least know that there's test results available and for what purpose 
these tests are executed and what they are supposed to check within these test results. The second question was um, how are cost and resource constraints affecting the detection of emergent system behavior? Well, manual analysis is resource demanding and this is only prioritized in uh, specific project phases. So we, we have good analysis coverage in certain phases and almost no coverage at all in other phases. We also have no continuous testing, which uh, gives us poor test coverage, uh, slow feedback because uh, people are not uh, in phase, they are not working at this at the same time. Then we get late detection of these emergent behaviors. Uh, the domain experts are needed both in development and analysis. So they uh, are easily doing some development tasks when they're needed for analysis. And automation techniques are the best way to improve this as we see it. We have to get both the testing and the analysis part automated to be where we want to be. The third and last question was how can the company improve detection of emergent system behavior during the system integration phase? We looked at two approaches. For the macro approach, this is similar to manual analysis that we do today and it's capable of detecting these emergent behaviors. But we should automate to, to speed up the detection process and uh, not only look at uh, the acceptance criteria, but more generally look at how the system works. For the micro approach, we need updated training data for the detection algorithm to fit the incremental development uh, process. So there's a lot of maintenance uh, tasks on this that needs to be done. We have also an issue with the tuning of threshold values because the detection algorithm cannot be too wide and it cannot be too sensitive because we, we want to detect um, all these emergent behaviors that we, we want to find, but we want to, uh, on the other side, uh, have too many false alarms, so we get too much detections, too much data to look into. And also here, the process should be automated to, to speed things up and get to where we want to be. Okay, to summarize and conclude this, I can start with saying that we have uh, identified that we have an unfit process acceptance criteria that we base our testing on at system level does not detect emergent behaviors. Um, manual analysis in extension to this acceptance criteria testing detects emergent behavior, but it is, it is really resource demanding. So automation is necessary to increase the test coverage, but manual analysis is still needed because this is not all that we, we can automate. Manual operations is needed to detect certain things. Um, scheduling and communication issues is something we struggle with. There's lack of information about the, the purpose of the testing, poor presentation of test data and lack of analysis tools, um, manual distribution of test data, uh, it should be automated, and there's conflicts with other tasks for the analysts.
for the different approaches. <clears throat> uh, an automated test framework can control behavioral changes, localize faults and ensure continuous testing. So um, we want to get to that point. A macro level approach has a low cost, is scalable and fits best the company case. So we believe we should move further with uh, that approach. A micro level approach is more costly, less scalable, but aids with localization of root causes. So that would help us, but it uh, may not be cost effective. Uh, further work, things that we should look into is that we should investigate approaches for detection of emergent behavior that's not part of our current processes. Like in the design phase, we could look more into model-based testing. Uh, in the integration phase, we could look uh, more into type uh, of machine learning, data-driven modeling. And for the entire life cycle, we could uh, build up and take use of a digital twin. Okay, that's it. Are there any questions?